When looking at all types of cells, a large part of what makes them function in unique ways are structures called organelles. Organelles are discrete components found within cells that perform specific tasks. These discrete components are often referred to as compartments, and we call cells, like eukaryotic cells that have many separate membrane-bound organelles, compartmentalized because of them. Organelles can take on many different forms, some being wrapped in a double-layer membrane like a mitochondria, and others having no membrane at all and are simply made out of RNA or proteins, like centrioles. A few examples of organelles that you need to know are the nucleus, vesicles, ribosomes, and the plasma membrane. Each of these components occupy a specific space within the cell and have their own unique functions, as listed here. But there are other components found within and around cells that are not considered organelles, like a plant cell wall, the cytoplasm, and the cytoskeleton. These would not be considered organelles because they do not occupy a discrete space and function within the cell, like the cell wall that sits outside of the cell membrane, or are too large and have too many separate components to be considered discrete enough to classify as an organelle, like the cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. Make sure you know these specific examples and the differences between them for the IB exam. Organelles like the nucleus provide a great benefit to eukaryotic cells for multiple reasons. Recall that prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, where eukaryotic cells do. The main difference here is that a eukaryotic cell has a way to protect and manage the DNA that is housed in the nucleus, where the prokaryotic cell does not. This is prominent when discussing how DNA is transcribed and translated into proteins via the help of ribosomes. In a prokaryotic cell, there is no nucleus, so the DNA strand and ribosomes exist in the same space. When the DNA is transcribed, it can be immediately translated because all of the components are next to each other. And this is pretty efficient in terms of speed to produce proteins. But within a eukaryotic cell, the DNA sits inside of the nucleus, which does not allow the entry of ribosomes. In this case, the messenger RNA from transcription has to be moved out of the nucleus to be translated. This allows time for the messenger RNA sequence to be modified before it is translated, which is an advantage to make the proper proteins our cells need to function. Both transcription and translation are discussed in greater detail in the D1.2 videos. Continuing on with advantages of organelles and compartmentalization, we already stated that eukaryotic cells have many organelles, which are found within the cytoplasm of the cell and are separated by their own membranes. Some advantages of having these separate compartmentalized components is that the cell can carry out specific tasks within them without greatly impacting the rest of the cell. We can see examples of this within organelles like lysosomes and phagocytic vacuoles. Lysosomes carry digestive enzymes that are used to break down macromolecules. If these components were just floating around the cell, they could break down parts the cell is actually using and needs, which would not be good. So keeping those components within their own membrane is important so that they can do their job when needed. Additionally, cells can intake external components via phagocytosis and place the content within a vacuole that has its own membrane and is separate from the cytoplasm of the cell. Enzymes placed within the vacuole, which could be from those lysosomes we talked about, work at different pH levels, and the pH level within vacuoles can be altered for these enzymes to function. Because all of this occurs within a vacuole, the changes in pH levels will not change the chemistry of the cytoplasm or impact the rest of the cell. 